and who the Lord of Lords is this morning, that we come with thanksgiving in our heart, knowing that we have been saved by grace, knowing that we can walk in freedom, no matter where we're at, no matter where we're going around, no matter who comes around us. I can walk in freedom this morning, Father God, because I know who you are. I know you live inside of me. I know I'm saved by grace. I'm sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost. I know where I'm going the day that you call me home. And I thank you for that, Father God. And I pray that my life will be a light unto others, that they know where they're going when they see the day coming. Lord God, and we see that your day's approaching, that you're going to split the eastern skies and call us all home. But Lord God, I pray that those that don't know you today, if there's one in this house that don't have his heart right with you, Father God, that's not saved by grace, that today, right now, they'll look up to the heavens and say, God, save my soul. Save me. I don't have to wait till the pastor preaches. I don't have to wait for an altar call. I ain't going to wait till praise and worship. But right now, I look up to the heavens and say, God, save my soul this morning so that I can be with you when you call me home. In Jesus' name. And everyone says, Amen. Let's worship. The enemy has been defeated. The enemy has been defeated. The death could hold you down. We're gonna lift our voice and victory. We're gonna make your praises loud. Cause the enemy has been defeated. The death could hold you down. We're gonna lift our voice and victory. We're gonna make your praises loud. Cause the enemy has been defeated Death couldn't hold you down We're gonna lift our voice in victory We're gonna make your praises loud Cause the enemy has been defeated Death couldn't hold you down We're gonna lift our voice in victory We're gonna make your praises loud Cause the enemy has been
till noon, and then he died. She went up and laid him on the bed of the man of God and shut the door upon him and went out. She called unto her husband and said, Send me, I pray thee, one of the young men and one of the asses, that I may run to find to the man of God and come again. He said, Wherefore wilt thou go to him today? It is neither new moon nor Sabbath. She said, It shall be well. Then she saddled an ass and said unto her servant, Drive and go forward, slap not thy riding for me, except thou be in thee. So she went and came unto the man of God to Mount Carmel. It came to pass when the man of God saw her afar off, that he said unto Gehazi, his servant, Behold, yonder is a Shumanite. That's the woman. Now run in, I pray thee, to meet her, and say unto her, Is it well with thee? And is it well with thy husband? Is it well with the child? And she answered and said, It is well. It is well. This morning I do want to talk about Christ's faith. That I believe that the church's faith needs to be built up or be seen and shown more in this hour that we live in. There's, if you look back over time when people are, uh, are put in certain type of crisis, sometimes there's great uh, uh, strength is given to some people to do great things that they normally couldn't do. I never forget the story of it. And my uncle was in a garage, and the garage had that lift, that hydraulic lift that goes up with a big round pipe and a four wheel thing sticking on the side, you know, lifts the car up. And, a, and, and the hydraulics gave away and came down on the mechanic. And my uncle, they said, not only lifted the car up, but lifted the whole hydraulic system and picked it up to his waist until they could drag the man out. Something that he normally couldn't have done otherwise. And there's many feats. I've heard of the story of a grand piano fell upon a child and a woman jumped down, weighed 110 pounds and picked up the grand piano up, amen, and was able to pull her child out. But it is with our faith also. Our faith is just made this to be out there prompt and be out there around us. Our faith is to be made strong during the times of adversity and times of trouble. I remind you that Paul's words in Ephesians 3 and 20. Now to him that is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. Many people do not know the potential of their faith because they have never had anything to challenge it or test it before. But nothing tests your faith like a crisis. And I believe that this crisis that's happened into the church world is being tested. Amen. And the church needs to stand up. Now this was a, a this humanite woman had a crisis in, in, in her life. And this crisis moment came up in her life when her child died. Amen. She was a mother with a big problem and a problem that still exists today. And what is that problem that she had to start off with? It really won't just that the child died. It's but do you have faith. And you'll see that story and how it portrays to us. It's asking her about faith. So there's five things that the Lord laid in my heart. And I want to quickly go over these things and, and, and show them to you that, that seem to help her have the faith that she needed to get through this crisis. The first of all, and when, when, when this crisis came, this lady had a crisis. We see this crisis. We see the, we see the um, virus. We see what it's doing. We hear all these kind of stories. We hear everything. But this was what she had. She had a perception. Let me tell you, if you're going to be a person of faith and you're going to stand up and be a, a man or a woman of faith, you've got to learn how to perceive things in a different light. And if you can't just look at things, amen, and say, well, this is the way it is. No, it ain't. Amen. I don't accept it like that. Amen. Amen. She had a perception. In 2 in, in Kings 4, 9 through 10, she said these words about this man of God or, or about Elijah. She said, he is a holy man. Oh, wow. Now, now I'm going to go ahead and get what a lot of people think is the, uh, 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 the hard thing or the thing that a lot of people don't accept. And I'm going to talk about holiness just for a moment here. Because holiness must be perceived. Amen. Not only just live, we've got to kind of perceive it, that it is holiness. How did she get to the faith that she needed it? Amen. Holiness led her to the faith that she needed to have. Amen. This was the first time this statement had ever been made for anybody in the Word of God. Anywhere. It's the first time it was made by 
is shooting out from I perceive that he's a holy man of God. Amen. The faithfulness of Elisha at that time or Elijah, to go to Mount Carmel and serve and worship God impressed upon this woman uh, um, um, his pack or what type of person he was. She said, I perceive that he's a holy man of God. She, well, let me tell you, God told Moses in Exodus, ye shall be holy for I am holy. And, and she perceived that in his pattern and the way that he acted, and she saw that. And then we got too many people, and we're going to be a church of faith. We can't be a church that sees all the other stuff. Amen. On the outside, we got to receive holiness. Come on, we got to receive holiness. Amen. She, in other words, she won't look in the opportunity to find fault. Help me out here, Lord. Amen. And, and to criticize. She was looking at something. Look at what this man is. Joshua said, this day we perceive that the Lord is among us. Amen. Let me tell you, I know that it's seen. You look at any tape station on TV. You see all the rocks. You see all the burning. You see them moving out by the thousands out of the large cities of New York. They say that it's pitiful and all these business and all the economy, how it's going, and you can say, oh, that looks bad, but I'm going to tell you, it's time the church that look up and know that their redemption draw not and perceive that God is still working, God is still on the throne, that the plan of God is still going forward. I don't care what our eyes might see, it might be the devil, it looks like he's got a big hand on everything, but you've got to perceive You've got to learn to have a perception that sees that people who will perceive holiness, without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. She was holy so she could perceive that he was holy. And the only way that we're going to have the faith that we need is perceive that he, and what holiness is. And the only way we're going to really know what holiness is, is that we got to be holy. Oh, my Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, let me tell you, John said in 1 John 3, 16, Hereby perceive we the love of God because he laid down his life for us. We ought to lay down our lives for our brother. This is what this woman does. She and her husband, they built a, a room for this prophet, a place that he could stay while he's trapped in rest. Amen. They extended God's goodness. Let me tell you, we've got to have the power and the goodness of God still working in the church. The church don't need to take a time out during this time. Amen. If there's ever time the church to stand up to the plate and say we can pray against this thing, we can pray for the move of God, it's the time the church to paint the man. Not to back down. Not to back up. Let me tell you something about holiness. God is looking for people who will live without sin, above sin, People that will hate sin and don't want to have anything to do with it. Come on. Peter said these words. I was, I was there when the Spirit came down at Mount Transfiguration. I heard the words of the Father speak out from the heavens. But I, he said these words, perceive that I have a more sure word, more than what I hear, more than what I feel, and more than what I see, church, we don't go by what we hear, we don't go by what we feel, we don't go by what we see, but we go by thus saith the word of the Lord. So where two or more are gathered in his name, he will be in the midst. I don't, I don't come to that point just because I'm just making it out of thin air, but the Bible says that I have a more sure word, the word of God, hallelujah, that tells me that God is still here as long as I'm still and you're here, amen. God is still on this planet. He's still in the church. He's still blessed. He's still saving. We don't need to back home. Amen. So I perceive that the word, uh, 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 not on how hot or how cold it is in the house, not who's singing or who ain't singing, not what kind of music they're singing, not who's here or who ain't here, but the Word of God. Amen. we got to learn to perceive the Word of God. So she had this perception that we've got to learn to have the perception of holiness. Without it, no man shall see the Lord. 
What's the second thing that pops in mind with her? She grabbed a hold of a promise. In 2 Kings 4, chapter 9, 13 through 17, Elijah was moved to do something to reward this lady and her husband for building this room. And the first thing he says, may I speak to the king or to the captain of the host for you? In other words, Elijah said, I, I'll get you to be in favor with the king and in favor with the captain of the host. And he said, I'll get you a pat on the back. You'd be in tight with them. She said, I don't need that. That ain't going to do me no good. I like that. She had no desire for prestige or power. Amen. Hallelujah. I wish we had it. Come on now. Amen. God, we need people not that that would say, I'm just happy to be a Christian. I'm happy that I'm on my way to heaven. I'm just happy. Amen. I don't have to have everything this world has to offer. Come on now. But now the servant Gehazi is, is the servant of, of the man of God, which is Elijah. And, and he looked around and he said, there's no toys in the front yard. There's no sign of young life. Her husband is old. Childbearing years have, have passed him by. And, and, and the husband is going to soon going to die. And she's going to be all alone. So he took, the servant tells the man of God that. The man of God looks at her. He says, this time next year you'll be holding the child in your arms. She didn't want to get her hopes up to be let down. So she did say, okay, whatever you say. And he went on his way. But that time next year, she, she, she had a child. He grew up. Let me tell you something. She didn't ask or beg him, but God gave her this child just to say. Amen. We have promises from the Father. Amen. The Bible says, hereby are we given exceedingly great and precious promises that by these we may be taught partakers of the divine nature of God. Amen. We're given promises in the word of God. Hallelujah. That no matter what we're going through, God's going to be with us. We don't need to get depressed. We don't need to be down and out. We don't need to worry about what's happening to us. Yeah, I, I don't want I want my children saved. I want them all ready to go. I want everybody I can to read. But I'm telling you, hallelujah, I'm not depressed about this stuff. I'm not down and out about this stuff. Amen. I'm looking up because my redemption is drawing out. It's time for us, the church, to look like we're happy to give. And not cry God. We got to show them we got the way out. The only way out of all of this mess that's happening in the world is through Jesus Christ and the church needs to act like we have the way, the only way, hallelujah, and that's through Him, amen, and oh my God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, at times God, He rewards our faithfulness when we have not even asked Him to do something, He'll do it. And let me tell you, church, God still wants to bless the church. He still wants to give us new converts. He still wants to give us new children. God is always interested in reproducing, always ready to give an increase, always ready to bring them in from the highways and the byways. Amen. Hallelujah. And because of the time, hallelujah, a gift that God wants, a promise that God wants the church to take up in this last day is to be filled with the Holy Ghost. There's a time that the church needs to see people filled with the Holy Ghost. It's right now. Uh, the Bible says that the Holy Ghost is a gift from God. Too many people stop at salvation. I want to tell you this day and how we need to be filled with the Holy Ghost. We need people filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. And I wonder how many gifts of the Holy Ghost is laid up in the portals of heaven because too many people in the church are just sitting around with them. I don't know if I want it or not. Oh Lord. It's time that we unwrap the gift of the Holy Ghost and be filled with the power from on high that we can do something for this world and help this world out. We looked at her perception and we looked at her promises that she had. We need to look at exactly what happened. Her problem. She had a problem. Can I say something about problems? Everybody in this house has a problem. I guarantee you, you can go to everybody in here and they're going to tell you about something. 
young or old, some kind of problem they got. Everybody seems to be, some might can give you so many you might not be able to leave today because you'll be sitting there and listening for problem after problem. Amen. But let me tell you something about problems. It's not your problem that keeps you from receiving from God. I said it's not the problem that keeps you from receiving from God. The problem is your excuse. God's got to help me out. I hope it's all right. I hope you don't get upset with it. But your problem is your excuse to have an attitude. Help me out. It's your excuse, I'm sorry, to be depressed. It's your excuse not to read the Word of God. It's your excuse not to pray. It's your excuse not to go to church. It's your excuse not to worship. Amen. Your problem, amen, is just your excuse card. And a lot of people don't leave home without it. <laughs> they carry it wherever they go. Amen. And they pull that card out. Look, look, this is why. I love it. They had that excuse card. Then see, the child that, 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 that the promise gave her grew up. He got sick. And you know what I don't understand? The Bible said he was fully grown and then she had him sitting on her knee. The little woman had him. He was sitting on her knee. And he died. Now, I want to tell you, this woman probably was so happy after this child had became a, a young man who was going to take care of her in her old age. When the husband died, she, this child was going to be able to take care of her. That's how they did welfare back then. Welfare, you didn't have nursing homes on this kind of stuff because the children took care of them. But then Hannah said, he's going to take care of me, he's going to do this and take care of me. But all of a sudden, this came up on her blind side and he died. Let me tell you, God always has the answer to every problem. Amen. Amen. I was watching the Western the other day, and, 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 and the guy got ready to leave out, and he was going to sacrifice himself, and this lady was so upset, and she was crying, and he was going to sacrifice himself. To, the, to them, and, 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 um, and, and he said, Honey, heaven has every answer to every sorrow that's ever been. And it does. To every problem, every sorrow, every tear, every, every trouble that we've ever had in life, heaven has the answer. And let me say something about trouble, though, although we are not immune to trouble. The servant is not greater than the master. The master had trouble. He had difficulty. Amen. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. But, but the Lord delivers from them all. We, we don't, hallelujah, stop because of a, a problem. And the church don't need to stop having church. Now let me tell you, I enjoy doing this up here this morning. Because I've been praying real hard for people not to be scared to come up to the front and get prayed for. Now we need to start having church like God wants us to have church. Anoint people, the Bible says to do these things. How do you pray in touch with Just leave her, let's leave the problem a little bit. Let's go to her procedure. That you've got to have the right procedures in your life. Too many people, you know, they do the wrong thing. It's like that old country singer that's looking for love in all the wrong places. Too many people go to all the wrong places looking for an answer to their problem. But this little woman went to the right place. She put the boy on the bed and the man of God. Amen. If you want healing and you've got a problem, you've got to learn to go to the healing place or to the one that can suffer. She went to the right person. Amen. You can, you can only go to the right person if you've got the right perception. If you have the right type of perception, uh, you can perceive what is right and what is wrong, what is holy and what is not holy, and you go to the right person. You can only do that if you have some holiness. And so she had the right perception. She went to the right person. So here she goes out there. The servant goes to meet her. He says, is it well with you? Is it well with your husband? Is it well with your child? She wasn't satisfied with your hazel. She had perceived that Elijah was the man of God. And she could also perceive, and this is this, that if she knew that he was a man of God, she perceived that Gehazi was a crook. Now I just threw something in there. It's why in the world does a man of God have his servant as a crook? 
Well, he tried to straighten them out, but he didn't straighten them out. So he took off and stole some things. Later on, it didn't take him long, right after that, that he stole some, and, and Elijah says, sent them on. Amen. And he got filled with leprosy of something that wasn't supposed to be to happen. That's another story. In other words, church, we do not need to settle for nothing less than the best. And Jesus Christ is the best thing that this world has and that we can offer to them. And we need to make the right proclamation to this world that Jesus Christ still lives. Because see, this little lady made the right proclamation. Because when that servant said, think about this, imagine this. The servant comes to meet her. She's going to the man of God. Her son is dead. She's upset. She wants him healed. So she's going there when the servant said, Is it well with you? Oh, yeah. Is it well with your husband? Oh, yeah. It won't well with her. She was upset inside because her son died. Is it well with the child? Oh, yeah. Why? Because she, if the world starts asking you how's it going, don't start giving all your problems. I don't understand if we're going to give them something better than they have, we need to stop telling them we got the same mess that they got. I don't have the same mess because between me and them, or between me and the world, is a man called Jesus Christ. I have the blood of Jesus applied, and I have something that they don't have, and I'm not, if the world says, are you all right? Yes. I'll hate to say it in hell. Devil don't win. If I was to get the virus, and, that, and the world said, oh, you got the virus, you're basically no, going no. Because I'm just going to tell you what one another man of God told in the Bible. Amen. If I die, then I'm going to be with Jesus. If I live, I'm going to talk about his healing power. Whatever. Amen. It ain't no different if I die or I don't. I believe it's the right proclamation. 
Whether it happens next week or it happens in five years, it's going to happen. It is nothing like it was when I was growing up. When they, 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 they said, it's going to happen, you better hurry and get life. It is going to happen now. That generation is going to be dying out pretty soon. Jesus is getting ready to come back. He's getting ready to come soon. And we need to be ready. I'm going to tell you, church, we need to claim a promise that, like she got a promise from mom, we need to claim that promise of the Holy Ghost and make a proclamation of the church that we still have power. It is pitiful that the church is looking so weak at this time that they're even calling around all around the world saying, church, please don't give up. If we're going to have a way in somebody's wilderness, if we're going to make a river in somebody's desert, we need to get back the power of the Holy Spirit moving again in the church world. The weak people come to church bound and they leave bound. Come on. People come to church unsaved and they leave unsaved. People come to church sick and they leave sick. People come to church depressed and they leave more depressed. People come to church to be blessed and they end up finding the mess. We need the power of the Holy Ghost again working in the church. And that's promise. Come on. We need the power of the Holy Ghost. Let me put it out 
You ain't going to get no football. You ain't going to get much of a basketball as long as they're running up and down and acting stupid. You ain't going to get all that much of a baseball. They ain't going to let you go to them so people can act like idiots at those games. I've been there, done that. Come on. Amen. But we can make a joyful noise in the house of the Lord. Oh, Lord. He's the God in the beginning. He'll be the God in the end. He's the Alpha and the Maker. 